Clarence Jones was born in 1900. When he was a boy, he so loved playing sports and music that he felt he was too busy for God. But Clarence's parents prayed that he would devote his life to studying God's word, and God answered their prayers. Clarence asked Jesus to be his savior and started playing trombone in his church. And God had a special job just for Clarence. Radios had recently been invented and Clarence's pastor, Paul Rader, had a special idea. He said, Clarence, let's broadcast services on a Sunday on radio. A lot of people thought that was a silly idea. They said, nobody's going to buy radios and listen to you. That didn't stop Clarence and Pastor Paul. This idea came from God and they were going to obey God. So on Sundays, they'd go to the roof of a tall building in Chicago and stand outside in a little box. When it was time to play live, Clarence pointed his trombone at a microphone. Other men played their instruments and Pastor Rader would teach the people about Jesus. And people listened. Soon thousands of people were coming to their church. So many boys and girls were coming that Pastor Rader asked Clarence to start a club so the children could learn about Jesus. Clarence's club is now known as Awana. Well, Clarence kept praying, asking God exactly what he should be doing and where he should be serving. And one day, God had a message for him. Arise, go south with radio. That's a unique message. But where did Clar God want Clarence to go? One day, Clarence met missionaries to Ecuador, and he said, did you ever think about using radio in Ecuador? Oh, that's our dream, they said. Can you imagine if we could point speakers at the jungles, and then we could teach the Quechua people about Jesus in their own language? Well, Clarence went and started to do some research, and there were a lot of problems. First of all, there were no radio towers to send out the broadcast. And only six people owned radios in the whole country. It would cost a lot of money to build a tower. And where should they build it? Some people said Ecuador was a horrible place to build a radio tower. It was right on the equator and there were too many mountains around it. Did that stop Clarence? No. He knew God was behind this project. Now, another word for problems is obstacles. Like when we're on an obstacle course, we have to climb over or run around something. And Clarence said, the more obstacles you have, the more opportunities there are for God to do something. Clarence wasn't relying on his own strength. Clarence was trusting God. Well, Clarence's radio tower worked. The first broadcast was sent out on Christmas Day, 1931, even though there were only a few radios for people to listen to. But since God was behind Clarence's work, in time, Clarence's radio station became known as the Voice of the Andes. People all around the world listened to stories about Jesus, songs about Jesus, and the news in 12 languages. During World War II, it was this radio station that offered hope to soldiers all around the world. The radio could broadcast in countries where it was illegal to teach people about Jesus. But soldiers from Russia once told Clarence, we felt God created radio just for us. Our government tells us not to believe in God, but your radio station let us know that there is a God and he loves and cares for us. Today, the work started by Clarence's radio allows the good news of Jesus to be sent to over 100 countries in about 120 languages. All of this work was possible because one man, Clarence Jones, decided to listen to God and obey him no matter what other people said. It was God who he, Clarence trusted. He said, it's amazing what you can accomplish as long as you don't care who gets the credit. Nothing you do for God is wasted. Boys and girls, let's make sure we're always listening to God and ready to obey him. God bless. See you next time.